in this video, we are going to discuss the different alternatives in order to name our resources using URIs. Even if in the video I will talk about URIs, all the comments can be applied to IRIs, that is, Internationalized Resource Identifiers, whose main difference is that IRIs can contain Unicode characters. This is a URI. When we generate our data, we have to ensure that all the resources that we generate have different URIs. For now, we are going to focus on the fragment identifier of the URI, which is the string that allows the unique identification of our resources. And more than in the fragment identifier, we will focus on the character that separates such the identifier from the rest of the URI, which can be a hash or a slash. When to use hash or a slash? Now we are going to see it. When using a hash URI, when we make a request to the server to access a resource, the fragment identifier is removed and we retrieve the whole document from the server, instead of which we have to search for re the resource we are interested in. As a result of this, the resource cannot be accessed individually because I have to retrieve the whole document. On the other hand, hash URIs allow me to create identifiers for non-document resources, such as persons or organizations. When using a slash URI, when we access a resource, a redirection is created to a new document that contains the resource. The disadvantage of this approach is that we have multiple HTTP requests instead of only one, and that we have to configure the web server and the redirections. When to use hash or a slash? It depends on our data. If we have plenty of data, or data are updated frequently or are modular, the best approach is to use a slash URIs. This allows us to access resources individually or in groups, being their descriptions distributed among different documents or services. If we have few data, using a hash URIs allows us to access all data in a single request. This is useful, for example, to publish ontologies, since usually we want to have all the model description. Returning to our process. What do we have to do to define our resource naming strategy? The steps to follow are the following. First, to choose our URI form, that is, if we are going to use either hash or a slash URIs. Things to take into account when defining our resource naming strategy. We have to ensure that the URI only identifies a single resource, for example, to distinguish between an object in the real world and the web page describing that object. Furthermore, URIs should be persistent and not changed over time. And there are different services that support such consistency. It is also advisable to separate the resources from the ontology model from the individuals and to define URIs that have some meaning when they are read by a person. In our Lead City Council example, we are going to use hash URIs for the ontology terms and slash URIs for the individuals. Besides, in the example we are going to use a domain that is under our control, and we are going to define different paths for ontological terms and individuals. Notice how we use the hash in the former and the slash in the latter. And finally, we define the URI patterns for both ontology terms and for individuals. 